Hey guys, and welcome back. So today we are working on a pair of Dan Post cowboy boots. Now, we've done quite a few cowboy boot resole videos because we get a lot of cowboy boots sent to us here in Nashville, Tennessee. But this pair of boots, as you can clearly see, is in pretty rough shape. The uppers apparently have not been conditioned in quite some time, so they're in rough shape. There are a lot of holes in the soles of these. The stitches are, are popping out in places. The heel pads are in rough shape. All of that is gonna be taken off and completely redone. But I also wanna throw in a few uh, added benefits or bonuses on this video. Uh, a lot of you guys always say, hey, what can I do to bring down the cost of my shoe repair? Well, in this video, we're also gonna go over a few tips that you can do to mention to your cobbler to help bring down that price a little bit more. So, without further ado, let's get to this pair of Dan Post cowboy boots. All right, got a pair of Dan Post cowboy boots here. This is gonna be a pretty straightforward resole. We might have a little bit of fun with it. We are gonna put some new well zone, some new JR soles, and some Vibram top lifts. Pretty much our standard for cowboy boot, but um, it's pretty straightforward. Let's, let's do it. All right, before I take this sole off, I do want to point out that it had previously been done with a half sole. Uh, this is not bad. In fact, I usually recommend, uh, if it's a first time resole on a cowboy boot, do a half sole. Then the next time you can alternate with a full sole, then a half sole, full sole, as long as the welt's in good shape. Now this welt is completely gnarled away and it can't be done. So we're gonna have to replace it. And if you replace the welt, you pretty much just go ahead and do a full sole. No stitches left on this thing. I don't know what it is with cowboy wears, but we get more cowboy boots where people just wear all the way through it than we do with dress shoes, or any type of shoe for that matter. For the internal guts of this thing, there aren't much that are actually made out of leather. This is as grand as plastic. This is, uh, uh, some, it looks almost like a hard felt. This is some sort of cardboard. Um, so yeah, there's not a lot of leather in here. All right, so a question that we get asked a lot is, is it worth it to resell it? Well, in this case, um, it is, but you could see on the insole where he wore all the way through and i just said that it was made out of some sort of like cardboard ideally we would want to put a leather insole on there and replace it but that's going to drastically shoot the cost up and so for this pair of boots it's better just to go ahead and get it resold and then watch how you wear it next time and but yeah we're not going to replace the insole we'll put like a filler inside Former cobbler, when he was doing this, got a lot of glue down in here, so it's hard to get to the stitches. one more hiding in there. Right. 
got him. All right. <clears throat> uh, this has been sanded down to where there's no lip on the back anymore, so this has got to come off and get replaced. Okay guys, the next thing that we're gonna do is put on new welts on this boot. The other ones are completely shot, so we're gonna to have to put all new ones on. Before we do that, let me tell you about something that most of us guys use on a daily basis, and if you're not using one, a lot of you guys need to be using one, and that is a good belt. Not just any belt, but an Anson belt. Now guys, you've heard me talk about Anson belts in past videos, and the reason for that is because we own several of them and because we really love the company. Now guys, one of the great things about Anson belts is it is a holeless micro adjustable belt, meaning that you have up to 30 options, all a quarter of an inch apart, and you're able to adjust the belt based upon your size. So let's say you gain a little weight or you lose a little weight, Basically, you just adjust the track system and bam, it now fits you perfectly. And the other great thing about Anson belts is one size fits all. So it comes in a long belt. You basically, you just cut it down to size, you put on the buckle, you click it in place, it's good to go. There's no more ugly creases or sloppy punched holes. Now, another thing that I love about the Anson belts is that you can mix and match. So let's say, for example, you bought some leather belts or some of their suede belts or their canvas belts, and you also buy a couple of different belt buckles. Well, the great thing is you can simply attach them, pop it on a different belt or take a different belt buckle and put on a different belt, snap it in place. Again, now you have a different belt with a different buckle and you, you can just interchange them all day as much as you want to. Now, another thing that I love about this company is that they have a lifetime guarantee on their belts. And not only that, but they have amazing customer service and they are family owned. And coming from a guy that also owns a family owned business, that makes a difference. Okay guys, for a special offer, click on the link down in the description box or go to ansonbelt.com forward slash Trent for an amazing discount. Okay guys, now personally, I recommend getting the box of three buckles and two straps, which will give you up to six different belt combinations. And you get all of that for under $100. Now, remember, uh, this is pretty much a cardboard thing, uh, insole, and it's been worn all the way down. The problem with this is when you allow your insole to be exposed, it warps the shape. It's no longer flat. It's got a dip, in it, and your foot gets used to that. So if I were to push that down flat, it's going to push up into the gentleman's foot, and it's going to be real painful. So unfortunately, we're not replacing this. We're going to have to leave that. Uh, but it's a very shallow cavity. We still need to put something in and cork is going to be a little too thick. So we're going to do a little bit more traditional and it's just a piece of leather. That won't be enough to push that down, but it'll be enough to fill in this cavity. And a lot of high-end cowboy boots use just a piece of leather.
glue is set up. We're gonna stick these things and then I'm gonna scratch my head and think, what can we do to kind of spruce these up even more? Don't you just love the background tune of that compressor? It takes forever to fill up. I need to get a bigger one. Unlike some of the other cowboy boots that have just wood pegs or wood pegs and nails, we are doing just brass tacks because that's what the originals had. So one of the things that we've tried doing in this video for you guys is showing you how you can save money on certain parts of a resole. Because one of the biggest statements we get all the time on every single video we do is I guarantee you it probably costs more to have your boots resold than to just go buy another pair. Well, sometimes that's the case, especially if you're sending it to us or certain other guys on YouTube who are doing shoe repair. But a lot of times it's not. And on this pair of boots, for example, we told you that on a pair of cowboy boots, you can do a half sole instead of a full resole. We told you that on this pair of boots, for example, we're not putting in a new insole in it. So that saves money. One of the other things I want to show you is the heel block. So a lot of times you can reuse the heel block that comes on your shoe or boots. Now this heel block was in great shape. It is reusable. It did not tear up at all. So that will save this customer quite a bit of money. So instead of having to do stacked leather like we do on a lot of our videos and build that up, it takes a lot of time, a lot of leather. So we're going to reuse these heel blocks. And again, that's another way to save money. Okay guys, so this pair of boots has been resold and it is now time to turn our attention to the uppers. Now I reached out to this uh, customer and I asked him what color were the original boots? Now these boots, they've been scuffed up. There's some really big nicks on the toe area of one of them and uh, a lot of little cuts on it. So the boot has seen its better days on the uppers. But again, I kind of like this whole faded look of the uppers and I, I'm just afraid if I go brown it's just it's going to take away from the character and the look of these boots and uh when the uh the, the owner of these boots reached back out to me and said hey you guys do whatever you think is best i'm cool with it so let's start uh, polishing these up conditioning these and i'll show you what i will do to keep the original or should i say to keep this this faded look of this boot all right guys, first thing I'm gonna do is just take a horsehair shoe brush, brush these off, just get a little surface dust off. Then I'm gonna take this Saphir cleanser, 
wipe these boots down really well just to get down a little bit deeper, clean out those pores, and then we'll start conditioning them up and polishing them. All right, now I'm just gonna again take some of this Saphir cleanser, squirt a little bit on the rag. It's pretty liquidy. Oh, there we go. And then just simply gonna wipe the upper down. All right, the cleanser has dried. Uh, again, you wanna make sure it completely dries before you do anything else. Now what I'm gonna do, again, in order to keep this patinaed look, I'm going to just use some uh, leather conditioner, okay? It doesn't really matter what type of conditioner you use. Uh, I will say if you use anything that has a lot of oils in it, like mink oil or even the Renovateur that has mink oil based, it may darken these up a bit. I'm just gonna use a simple conditioner on these like the Universal Cream, and that's gonna put a lot of moisture back into the boots. Uh, it'll darken them up a little bit because these are you know, dehydrated, but it, it'll keep a lot of that patina. So let's continue. So these boots have been nice and hydrated, conditioner is on there. Now the last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a dark brown shoe cream and I'm just going to apply a little bit onto those certain spots where it's really missing color. So especially right up here in the toe, uh, there's a little bit of a gash here on this, on this boot here. So I'm gonna put a little cream in there to color that in. And there's some spots back here on the heel as well that I'm gonna get, see how much uh, condition or how much the shoe cream pigment will fill that in. And then after that, we'll buff these off and they're ready to go. And we're gonna get these little areas along here as well, up here on the shaft. Okay hey guys, this pair of uh, Dan Post boots is been, has been wrapped up uh, as usual. Uh, guys, this is our last two days, uh, today, tomorrow, for our NYX boot collaboration. Uh, they do have some left, so I would advise you if you want a pair and you want to jump on these, jump on them now because that's it. They'll be leaving forever. So uh, again, I'll put the link down below. Uh, click on it, go check them out, uh, grab yourself a pair if you like them. Also, uh, any of the products that you saw us using today on this pair of boots, whether it's conditioner, shoe cream, brushes, whatever, anything you need to take care of your footwear, um, as well as leather goods, check them out at the link potterandsons.com. Again, links down below. That is our business, and uh, we appreciate the patronage. Okay, Dan Post boots, what are your thoughts? All right, I don't think we've done a Dan Post. We may have before, but this pair was in rough shape. Um, yep. He wore all the way through, obviously. Little recap on it. Insole was made out of like a cardboard, not very impressive. Because of that, we had to put just a thin piece of leather, which is actually very traditional with cowboy boots. It's yep. not cork, it is just a thin piece of leather. We could use the, re, we re, reuse the insoles. That was mm -hmm. able to keep the cost down and we reused the hill blocks. Yep. The hill blocks were uh, leather board, but they came off pretty clean. Yep. So we were able to reuse those and we had to put new welts on them. 
Yeah. And had some fun with some spraying on the bottom. Yeah. And that, again, I know we mentioned this earlier in the video. Some of you guys may have skipped past it, so I'll just reiterate. Uh, so many questions, or should I say statements, comments, come in every week. Every week. Um, I bet it costs more to repair that pair of shoes than it would go buy a new pair. Okay. So yeah, on, yeah. On some, some of those shoes, yeah, you're absolutely right. But there's a lot of shoes that come into our business that no, uh, believe it or not, the, uh, the cost of the repair oftentimes is much cheaper than the pair of shoes or boots themselves. Now, again, if you're sending them to us or some other guys out there, uh, the cost is a little more expensive just because so many people are sending their stuff to us. You know, it is what it is. But hey, your local cobbler around the corner, you know, if he does a good job, uh, take them to that guy, you know, uh, or woman and give them a chance. Um, and a lot of times their costs are going to be cheaper than, a, you know, another new pair of shoes. Just make sure that their work is good. Is, is good. Yeah, and so definitely check out their videos. It's not cheap because their work's bad. Yeah, but in this video, again, we just wanted to, we didn't pull out all the bells and whistles. Um, this was a basic resole that you would see from a lot of shoe cobblers. Now, the only thing that we did uh, that we kind of threw in there free of charge was you know, coloring and, uh, you know, staining the bottoms of the soles. You're not going to get that with most of your local shoe cobblers. It's not going to happen. But everything else, we tried to cut corners or not cut corners, but cut costs by using the originals. And a lot of times that's what's going to happen on a, a basic resale. Uh, some of our videos, we kind of go above and beyond sometimes just so you guys can stay entertained and see what all you can do. But on this one, we wanted to keep the cost down and show you what just a basic resale will generally And be. also, uh, we do half soles on cowboy boots. Uh, there are a lot of cobblers out there that mm -hmm. will do them on dress shoes. Yeah. But kind of that uh, advice on a cowboy boot is if you do a half sole, next time do a full sole. Half sole yeah. fulls, just kind of bounce back and forth. Don't do half soles, you know, one after another. You will kind of wear it out. Yeah. So, all right, I hope a lot of that answered your questions. I hope it helped out a lot. And again, I hope you were entertained. If you were, we always appreciate a thumbs up. It does help the channel grow and it does help the video. So uh, do that. Also subscribe to the channel, share this video with your friends. And until next time, y'all have a good one.